Alzheimer disease is a complex brain disorder characterized by memory loss, confusion, and difficulties with daily activities. It's not clear what causes the most common form of Alzheimer disease, which affects older adults. But a small number of cases are due to a specific gene that runs in certain families. In these cases, the disease manifests itself at a younger age, sometimes as early as in the 30s. This is EOFAD, or early onset familial Alzheimer disease. In the First Nations family with whom we've been working, a unique pre one gene was identified, which is the cause of the early form of Alzheimer's disease in this family. There is a large family tree and we estimate that 100 relatives are currently at risk. This project, Wellness in Alzheimer's Disease, was conducted in the context of cross-cultural neuroethics. It benefited from a deep partnership with the Italtan nation. In the end, there is no known cure for EOFAD, but through our work we identified a great need for knowledge and understanding to mitigate stigma and bring meaningful resources to the community. We are grateful to all who contributed so generously. Christine Ball, member of the Taltan Nation, healthcare professional and family caregiver, narrates our story. Well, there's been a lot more awareness around Alzheimer's at all levels. Programs, like the programs that are um, being delivered out of the health centre, are more uh, sensitive to Alzheimer's and the individuals, the families that are, that are dealing with their loved ones and that. I believe there's, that's, the workers are more, far more aware of it as well, as well as the family members. I believe the shame, there's a lot less shame about it. I hear far more dialogue about it, which I never, you never heard that six, seven years ago, eight years ago, ten years ago. just wasn't unheard of. For me, it was very dear because I had a loved one just diagnosed. But I also had heard over the years, and I had several like friends. I, I grew up with uh, this family. I've got very close friends, very close friends in this family as well. But that's what sparked my interest in, and um, that there needed to be more information, more resources for the families, more talk about it. You know, I think back to even 2008 to 2009. It just, like, people just didn't talk about it. I remember my family member, how the fear around it, around even talking publicly about it and openly about it. It's just the stigma that, that was there about the Alzheimer's and because and we all knew it was within this family. My expectation was we needed hands-on, we needed hands-on resources and tools to help families, to help us as frontline workers, to make it easier for the families and individuals that we were dealing with and that are dealing with it and many times in silence. When I moved to the community here, we had a couple individuals with Alzheimer's and I just saw as many of the struggles and them um, hesitating to reach out. That was huge. I bet if you could rerun that to now, I don't think it would be as scary for them. Maybe, you know. I think the work has just begun. I think there's far more work that needs to be done within the families themselves. Um, and there's still a lot of fear. There's still a lot of fear and a lot of the acceptance and the acknowledging what they're going through. So I think a lot more education around that, maybe a video, maybe some resources that are about our nation, you know, with our people maybe. Education, training, maybe workshops for family members, training for our frontline workers in the nation, in the schools and in the health centers, and also sticking health center. It's huge, because mm -hmm. we're all dealing with all levels. Leadership, like, that's the other um, 
going back to the impact leadership at our leadership table it's actually talked about you know and I bring this project forward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that as well This project clearly had an impact of increasing openness and understanding and decreasing the shame and fear about Alzheimer's disease. Building on that, I see these as the priorities in continuing this work. We need more skilled health care workers for caregiving and respite that's community-based. Continued knowledge exchange through social media. A library of culturally relevant resources like the ones the project has delivered. I believe that these priorities are extremely important and this work has just begun. Medu.